Hello everybody and welcome to a brand new redstone video. It feels like it's been a while since I got one of these out, so I'm trying to change that up by starting a brand new series. So in this series, with this being the first episode, I'm going to show you guys how to make all kinds of different arcade machines. For this first one, we have all this stuff behind me, and it's this randomizer kind of gambling arcade game. It's a ton of fun, I'll show you guys how to build that and how it works and everything. But in this world, I'm going to build up all kinds of different arcade games, and I'm going to build a different section for each one. You can see we have this giant purple area, and then I'll build a new area over in this direction, right over here. And we'll do an orange area or something, and then we'll build up a brand new game there. And by the end of this, we should have all kinds of different arcade games, and a full arcade's worth of different games to play. So I'm really excited to show you guys all these different arcade games. This one here is a pretty awesome one, and it's a ton of fun to play. So I prepared a little movie for you guys to watch about it, so I hope you enjoy it. So that movie showed a bit of how it worked, and I'm actually really surprised that I just got the major prize right before recording this clip. But all you have to do is toss a token into here. If you put any tokens in, the light lights up, letting you know you have a credit in the machine, but you could throw in a few more. And then if you press the button, it dispenses that into one of these random 7 spots. And so based on what you get, you get a different outcome. Just there we got nothing, which means no prizes are given, you don't get any type of uh, things for that. Let's play again, we got nothing again, that's actually the most common. And nothing the third time, that's pretty lame. Let's see what else we could get. That time we got minor prize, that means we get three tokens from here. So there we go. Let's put in a few more tokens as we ran out and see what else we could get. This time we got minor prize again, that's pretty good. Go we'll grab those, and we can keep playing. Oh, that time we got lockdown. That's the one that you really don't want to get. If you get locked down, even if you have credits in the machine, you can't play anymore. You can see it just dispenses it out because it gets rid of the water. And yeah, it keeps you from playing. So I actually went and deactivated the lockdown so we could play a bit more. We'll enter in a few more tokens and see if maybe we could get the major prize. So this time we got minor prize again, that same one. And so pretty much the idea is you just keep playing and see what you could get from this. It costs one token each time to play. And then obviously you could get better things like the minor prize or a return just gives you your same token back to you. Oh, and there we go. That was so lucky. We just got the major prize. I'd say the major prize is probably about a 1 in 50 chance of actually getting it, so I'm really glad I captured that. You can see we actually got 16 tokens for that, which is a super good prize. And so pretty much, that's the idea of how this thing works. You put your tokens in, press the button, see what you could get, hope not to get locked down. And I'll show you real quick, if you have no tokens in the machine, you press the button. It just doesn't do anything, so you haven't put any in. But yeah, that's pretty much it. It's a ton of fun trying to see if you could get the major prize and seeing if you could keep your money or maybe grow it and you really got to try not to get locked down or lose all of your money. So next I want to describe a bit more of how this thing works. So I'm actually going to do that in three different perspectives. We'll do it from the player's perspective, the owner's perspective, and then from a redstone perspective. So to start off with the player's perspective, you have seven different spots that you could get the token into and then five different outcomes. So we'll start off with the major prize. If you manage to get a token all the way down here, you'll be given 16 tokens out of the prize chute right here. And so that's a profit of 15 because you're losing one by putting it into the machine. And then you get 16 out of here. And so then the next one is the minor prize, which is a profit of 2 because it gives you 3 tokens out of here. And so then for the return, if you get the token into there, it just gets moved back around and given back to you. So you get the same exact token back. And then if you get nothing, that means it takes your token, you get no type of outcome, so you're losing one token by getting it in there. And then you also lose one token by getting it in the lockdown, but it also locks down the entire machine so you can't play for 5 minutes. And so then next, to look at this from the person who actually owns the machine, and is the person collecting the player's tokens they're putting in. This is kind of how it works for them. So I went over to this one, which is just the same machine, but it's built up so you can see what's going on a lot better. And so we'll look at each thing. So right here we have the lockdown, and so this is just a little trapdoor channel that leads into here. 
So if I drop a thing onto here, you can see it gets rid of the water, but the token just sits there and you're not actually able to collect it at all. So one thing I wouldn't recommend is using diamonds or something as a currency for this game, because you would have a diamond just sitting there every single time someone gets locked down. I feel like that's something you wouldn't want enough happening, just having diamonds get wasted in this. So we'll look at a few more different things. This one right here is nothing. So you can see it's just a hopper. It has no comparator coming out of it. So if I drop a token, if I could actually get it in, into there, it just feeds it into this barrel. You can see we got one in here now. And it just collects it, but it doesn't give any type of effect to the player or the person actually playing the game. And so then for a return, it puts it into this water stream. So we have a return both here and then here. And so that puts it into this water stream, which goes along this way puts it up into that bubble elevator and that's what carries it up over to here and so it just puts it into the water stream and carries it back to the prize chute and so then next we'll look at these hoppers here so these two are for the minor prize so whenever it gets put in there you're also able to collect it because it goes into this hopper chain which leads into the barrel which means that you're getting a token from it but then it's also activating a little bit of redstone back here. As for the minor prize, it activates it long enough to spit out three tokens. And so those tokens come out of a storage right here. Actually, I actually have purple concrete in here. It should be these little tokens. And so then that spits it out from the storage right there. So that's actually something you need to refill every now and then. Not very often though, unless someone gets a ton of prizes. And so that's the same sort of thing for the major prize right here. It activates something down there and that makes it spit out 16 tokens. So pretty much from the person who owns a perspective, you have some tokens getting fed into here, which could be like your earnings for the machine, and then you have this little spot you have to refill over here. And so now for the actual redstone of each thing, we have for this first one, whenever a token gets pressed on there, it activates the pressure plate, sending a signal onto this, so that observer sees that pulse and it powers this block, which powers the dispenser, and that makes it retract all the water, and so we just have a water bucket in here, it's going to be a water bucket if there's no water, and obviously empty bucket if there's water out. And so then when that token finally despawns after 5 minutes, it will disappear, which does the same sort of thing, activating the observer again, which makes the dispenser now spit back out its water. And so that's how that one works. For the nothing, it's pretty simple, you just have a hopper feeding into a line of hoppers which just points into the barrel. And so then for this one, this is pretty much no redstone involved for the return system, it just gets put into the water stream, carried up here, and it's all just water streams that carry it up there. And so then uh, where the redstone actually comes into place the most is for the two minor prizes we have here and here, and then for the major prize. So whenever a token goes into that, it activates the comparator. So in this case, it depowers the torch, which powers this torch here, and then that makes this piston extend for... Oh, wait a second, I could actually improve this redstone a bit. I just realized this. If I do that... Oh, no, that's dumb, never mind. But what I actually now realize is that I could change it up a bit. I could put a repeater facing this way instead of a redstone dot, and then a redstone dot up here instead of all these torches, but there's really no reason to do it, it's just two torches and the repeater, so you're not really saving any resources, just another way to do it if you want. Alright, so anyway, back onto this, oh, now I'm breaking everything. And so whenever that comparator detects an item flowing through this hopper, it depowers the one torch right here, which powers the torch here, extending the piston. And that connects these two observers, and when you have two observers facing each other just like this, it creates a pretty fast pulsing clock, and so that extends for just long enough to get three pulses out of this thing, which dispenses three items from this dropper. And so that's a bit different from the major prize, we want to have more items, so when that one activates, it sends a signal running up this way, and it actually activates a pulse extender. So the input signal is still the same, but it drags that out a bit longer by having the pulse extender, and that makes the piston activate for a bit longer, and that gets more pulses out of the clock, and we end up getting 16 pulses and get 16 items for the major prize. And so then the final other redstone we have going on is just for this little starter circuit here. There's actually not too much redstone for this entire thing. Uh, I'd say the most kind of bulky part of this is just the token dispenser stuff. And so then for this area, we just have a few different things. So we have this one dropper here. This is the dropper that spits out your tokens. And this actually has quite a few different things that need to connect up into it. First of all, we just have the hoppers. This hopper points into this hopper, which points into the dropper. So whenever you put something into there, it just flows automatically into the dropper right here. And so then that dropper has a comparator pointing out of it right there. So that comparator powers the block, which powers the redstone dot, which powers this block here, which powers the redstone lamp. So whenever there's something in there, it powers everything, powering the lamp. And then the final thing is, when you press this button right here, it powers the redstone dot, which powers the block, which powers the repeater, which powers the block, and that powers the dropper right above it. Alright, so with explaining all this pretty much out of the way, 
whoops we could get on to actually building this thing so the build area you're going to need for this is pretty much a 12 so that's right across here the longest dimension we have by 7 which is this dimension right here and then it's eight blocks tall which includes the roof here so that's all the way from the roof all the way down to the lowest portion of redstone and so then it's represented by this area here but it's also eight blocks and since we have air block here, it's actually nine blocks via the entire thing built up. I think you guys get the idea. So then if we look into here, this is everything you're going to need to build it, at least pretty much. So for all the redstone, we have ten redstone dust, four repeaters, six comparators, four torches, three observers, one redstone lamp, twelve hoppers, two droppers, one dispenser, a sticky piston, a stone button, and then three iron pressure plates. And so then for some more miscellaneous type stuff you're going to need, you need a uh, packed ice, that way the item's actually able to slide around on one little segment we have right there. So that's just to get it into the little elevator we have there. And so then the same could be said for the soul sand, that's just for the elevator. And the seven signs are just to label each of the prize chutes. Then we have the trap doors are for all those little prize channels for them to slide into. And then we have one barrel, which is where all of your money gets stored in that one spot I showed you. And so then we have a water bucket, I think you need, uh, well you're going to need quite a few, but pretty much just a water bucket for the waterways you're putting in. I don't know the exact amount of water sources you need, but it's going to be something around 10 if you wanted to use ice or something. And then uh, it's going to be about 5 stacks of any type of block you want. So I built the entire thing out of purple concrete, but you could really use whatever. As long as it's a solid block, I think that would mess with some redstone if you used glass or something. But then it's also 21 glass for the little window we have right here in front. And then uh, a few other things you need are just all these colored blocks, and so these are kind of optional. But these just highlight each of the different prize spots. So that's pretty much everything in preparation for this. Another thing to look at real quick is that if you're building this in a space, it sticks above uh, the ground quite a bit, and then it also goes down into the floor a bit. So you need to make sure that wherever your ground level is, you need to have this lined up correctly. And so that's actually, if we count this one, that's one, two, three, and the floor is at the block four. And so that means where you're standing with these blocks all right here is layer five. So just keep that in mind when you're building this thing. And the final thing I want to say before we get into building this thing is that I have this world right here that will be able to be downloaded in the description below if you guys want to download this to play the games or to check out how it works. I have a ton built up over here that you could play in all kinds of different colors just for fun. But you'll spawn into the world right here. We have these little pathways to kind of categorize each thing. So we have how to build it up layer by layer, which I'll show you guys in just a second. We have what you need, which is the chest I just showed you of all the different materials you need. And then we have the full game. So this is just a game ready to go and play. And we have the exposed redstone where you can see everything and see a lot better how everything works. And then we just have more machines in different colors. And so you can go and play all these if you want to. And then like I said at the beginning of the video, the next time I build up an arcade game, I'm going to build it up in this world here. And so you can see we have this little purple tab for this whole purple section. But then I'll build up the next tab, which could be lime green or orange, whatever the next arcade game will be built up in. And so then that will take up this whole area here. And then as we go on building all these arcade games, we'll get more and more of these colored tabs. And then by the end of this, when you download the world, you'll have all kinds of arcade games to play. And I think that should just be a ton of fun. And you'll have these little demonstrations of each one. I really think that should be pretty cool. Alright, so now to get on to building this thing, I built this up layer by layer. So if you just took the entire thing and you split it up into slices, you could see this would be each layer of it. So this is the whole first layer, and it's numbered with each one of these. So it's a total of 8 layers because it has a height of 8. And so I'll just quickly show you on this. You can see on the first layer, it's just this little section here. And so that's what's put it right onto this one. And so then what you need to build up on top of that is this here. So you can see how this would be the start of the elevator. It's right above the soul sand. So it would get the bubble effect. Then this little stream here would be held in place by this little spot here. And so this is each layer. I'll go through and just stop at each one so you can see all of them. If you want to try to build it up just by looking at this. Right now I'll just get an aerial shot of the entire thing. So we could look back at this entire thing. And then I'll go through layer by layer. So I actually just realized something pretty dumb I did. I don't know how I messed it up. It's fixed now. But for some reason I had the 5 and the 6 backwards. It looks something like this. See, I don't know what I was thinking, but just wanted to let you know I fixed it.
So now let's get to work on actually building up this thing. So what I did so far is I laid out this platform, which is 7 by 12, just like the platform I showed right here. And then the one other thing I've placed down is the floor level. So to play the actual arcade game, you'll be standing right here and you'll be clicking a button, which will end up being about right here. And so that's four blocks off the surface right here. And that's where you're going to be standing. So four blocks below is the redstone we're going to be placing down. And then the thing's going to be built up a bit higher than that. But that's just to give you an idea of where the actual working space will end up. So I was thinking about how I was actually going to build up this thing. And I think the easiest way is just to build it up layer by layer like we have right over here. So for that first block of soul sand, you want to count three away from this corner right here. And then uh, two away from this corner right on that block there. And so to give me an idea of where that is in context of the entire build, this is going to be where the window ends up and where you're actually interacting with the arcade machine. And so the elevator is popping up right where the price chute will end up. And then from there you want to add in your packed ice for the items to slide across into the elevator. And then it's just another 5 blocks after that. And so now we're all finished with the first layer, so let's start on the second layer. So I'm going to go in that opposite corner of the soul sand, and I'm going to go to this block right here which is two blocks towards the middle, and then flush with this wall right here. So just like that, and since it's on the second layer, you just want to build up one more and get rid of the block below. And then I'm also going to place in another block, just diagonal with that one, going in towards the center, so we get a little structure just like that. And then what I'm going to do is count four blocks away from the one spot we just placed the diagonal blocks to build up another two high structure just like that. And then from there, I'm just going to fill in this entire area, going all the way around the water stream. So fill in everything except for above the blocks we placed right here. So pretty much just like this, going and wrapping all the way around, and then just fill in all this. And then we have that whole section all ready to go. And then the final few blocks you need are two more right here, leaving a one block space right there. If we look over at this, leave a two gap right here, and then just another block, just like that. And that should be your whole second layer all ready to go. So now starting on the third layer, I'm going back over to these two diagonal blocks right here. And I'm just going to place in one block in between the two right here. So this block is on the side that's flush with the wall here, not on this little segment. So pretty much just have something that looks like this. And then running out of that one block and on top of the two diagonal blocks we placed right there, you want a repeater right here, which is on this one, just like that. And then a redstone dot on this one here. And then you also want to place a block right in front of the repeater, and then one to the side of that, and then just one more. So this is just going to be a filler block, so we can place that, then that one off that, and we could get rid of this one right here, so we end up with that. And now I'm going to place in a barrel just in front of that one repeater there, and then I'm going to run some hoppers and a line, just one pointing after the other, straight into the barrel, and that should go all the way up so it's flush with the ice right here, so not on top of this block, but just like that. And then we need some more hoppers pointing into this hopper line right here. So you want one right there, then leave a space, another one here, and then two more there and there. So now we're going to place in some more redstone circuitry. So in between this hopper and barrel, place an iron pressure plate. And running out of that, have a repeater pointing into a block, and then have a redstone dot right there. So now we need to place in some more purple blocks. So let's build those all the way up from the side of this repeater all the way over so it's at the diagonal of this one hopper. And then out of these three hoppers, have a comparator pointing all in the same direction, just like that. And now I'm going to place in some more purple blocks, kind of weaving around the comparators we have right here. So just in all the areas to the side and in front of the comparators till we get right here. Then you want to place a full donut of blocks going all the way around this elevator we have here. And then the final block we need is just in the corner and pop it in. So then to finish up the redstone circuitry for this layer, have a repeater coming out from the block the comparator is pointing into, and some redstone dust in front of that. And it's just another redstone dust right there, and then a torch off this block. And I apologize, I forgot to add this in, but you need an iron pressure plate on top of the packed ice we have right here. Because when we place in the water that we have here and here, you need to make sure that it doesn't flow out. And then you also need one water source going in right here. So then that's the third layer all completed, so let's start work on the fourth. So for that, I'm going to place in a block right there in the very corner on the fourth layer. And then I'm going to place a redstone lamp pointing off that. And then we need to actually go and grab a dropper, because we're going to place in a dropper with the repeater pointing into the block right here. So right on top of that block, place a dropper pointing upwards. And then have two hoppers, one pointing into the dropper like that, and then one pointing into the hopper right there. And then you could go ahead and fill the rest of this line all with purple blocks. So now we need some more redstone circuitry. So running out of the dropper we have right here, place a comparator that will detect anything in there. And in front of the comparator, place a block for it to point into, and then a redstone dot right here. 
and then go ahead and grab an observer and have it so it's facing down just like that. So you want to place it from the higher view like this, and so the redstone part is pointing upwards. So now place a block right on top of this barrel here, and then all the way down this entire line. And then after that, fill in the rest of this area, but leave a 2x2 two two gap, just like that in this little area we have right here. And then for the rest of this, this little area we just marked out, you could fill in completely with blocks. So you should end up with something just like this. And so now I'm going to go ahead and place in another dropper. So you want to have this one pointing in this direction, facing that way. And then you want to place a block to the side of that and all around. And then the final one here so that we completely enclose the elevator. And then you want to grab a water bucket and fill in the water source right here. So then behind that dropper we placed in, you can place a block just like that. And then you need to get a redstone torch, and that goes right to the side of that block right there, pointing upwards, not on any of the walls. And then you need an observer, so the redstone part is pointing this way towards the redstone torch with the face right here. And then you want to have another observer, so you want to place it from this side just like that. So they're both staring at each other just like this. Then you want to grab a sticky piston and you want to place it from this side right here on the side of this observer and you want to have that right up snug against the observer so you end up with a little circuit just like this. And so now you can place a block on top of this redstone torch right here and then a redstone torch on this wall right here. We gotta watch out because this guy will start going crazy so you could probably do that in a better combination but if it happens just make sure to move it back to its original position right here. So now just fill in the rest of the line of blocks going all the way from here all the way to the end of the machine just like that and then we need to place in a few trapdoors. So then to place in those trapdoors you want to be standing on this side here where you can see I have everything set up. You don't want to be standing on this side like this. So yeah go ahead and stand on this side place in a trapdoor just like that and then flick it up and then from there you could just keep on going like this until you fill in this entire area completely full of trapdoors. So pretty much you end up with something like this. So now we could start on the fifth layer and we're going to place in the only redstone we have first, which is a stone button on top of this redstone lamp right here. And I recommend the stone button because that means you could spit out tokens quicker and play the game quicker. And then you want to place a dispenser on top of the comparator we have right here. So they're both flush and not like that. You want it to be facing in that direction. So they're both pointing into the same air block just like that. And the one final thing is to place a redstone dot on top of the observer. So now for some more structured blocks, which are the purple blocks. Go behind the dispenser you placed in, and then one to the side of that, and then one uh, diagonal, the redstone lamp, so you get a little tri thing just like this. And then you need one more block just right here. So then we could go back over to the side with the elevator, and you want to place in a three wide section of blocks, going all the way back just like this. So you want to place that in everywhere except for where the elevator is. So dodge the elevator and then fill it in so you leave this one corner empty right here to give you better access to the dropper you have right here. And then you need one final block on top of this redstone torch. And then after that, just continue the purple going all the way along here. And so you want to fill in that entire line and then you want to fill in that line. I actually have to go peek at this real quick. And so it looks like you want to go four blocks away. So that's one, two, three, four. And so starting here, and you just want to fill the rest of this in. So then the final thing for this layer is to add in your glass. So you could use any type of glass. I like using purple to match the purple theme we have going on so far. So just fill in that entire line going across there. And actually I almost forgot, we need some more trapdoors in. So this time it's a bit different. We only have one more extra trapdoor. But for that, I'd recommend placing in a block right there. Then a trapdoor off that block, you could get rid of the block now. Open up the trapdoor, so we have one here where we didn't have one on the layer below. And then after that, just do the same pattern of placing in these trapdoors and opening them until you get all the way to the end. And by the way, for anyone who doesn't know, to place a trapdoor on another trapdoor without flicking it like this, you just need to hold down shift, which allows you to place it on top. Because if you try to do that without holding shift, it would just flick it like this. So yeah, it's a pretty useful tip to know. And then the one final thing is just to fill in the water we have right here. So now we're starting on the sixth layer and I'm going to quickly place in all the redstone. That's just one redstone dust above the piston we have right here. And then also a redstone torch on top of this block we have right there. And I'm actually sorry I messed up again. You actually don't need these three blocks right here. You want to have this whole corner so it's all flush just like that. So now you could pop back over to this corner, the one that we had the dispenser and the redstone lamp at. And you just want to go into that corner, place a block like that, and then make it too wide, and then just extend that three blocks down, so you end up with that. And then after that, you just need to place in a few blocks going right here, and then continue that so it wraps all the way around, all the way over to this redstone dust. So then we need to place in some more purple blocks. 
So go ahead and place a block to the side of the redstone dust there, and then another one to the side of that, so you get a pattern like that. And then just extend these both down, going all the way to the end, so filling in everywhere except for this redstone torch. And then the final structure blocks just go in here alongside this, so stretch that one out and stretch this one out, and you end up with this little channel. Then go ahead and get an iron pressure plate and place it right here in front of this thing, definitely not a dropper. And then you just want to place a water source right here so it flows towards that pressure plate. So now just go and place some more glass on top of the glass you already had, just filling in another line just like that. And the final thing you have left to do is grab all these different colors we have over here and put these in place. So for that I'm starting on the side with the dispenser and the dropper, and it goes red, then black, and it goes white, green, white, green, and then yellow. And then I'm just going to start on the next layer by placing the blocks on top of that. So it just goes in the same pattern, and so just place in all those. So then let's get the redstone done for this layer. So it's a block on top of that torch right there, with the repeater running out of it. And in front of that repeater, you have two redstone dust. Then coming out of that redstone dust, have a comparator that's pointing in this direction, that's pretty important. Then go into 180 and place a comparator in the opposite direction, so you have one pointing this way, the one that's closer to all the colors, and then one pointing towards the repeater, that's right on the side of the build. Then it goes a redstone dust behind this one here, and then a purple block in front of this one here. And then the one final thing that isn't just purple blocks is to place the glass on top of all the existing glass, and that finishes up your window. So then for the purple blocks, you want to place purple blocks in a three wide pattern, going across the entire bubble column we have right here, and then filling in this block as well. And then after that, it's just one on top of here, and if I peek over there real quick, yeah, then it's just all these just mimicking what we had on the layer below. And then one other thing you need to do is place in all the signs labeling each thing. I'll put it up on the screen so I don't have to name them all out. But they just match each of the colors with the different prizes that you get. And that's pretty much it for the seventh layer. And so then for the final layer, it's definitely the most complicated. So plug in your thinking brains because you really got to be concentrating for this one. So here we go. Yeah, you're, you're pretty much just filling in the entire thing. It's really simple. And I apologize if I was annoying or kind of dumb with any of this. This is my first time actually ever doing a redstone tutorial for something like this with a pretty big build with lots of uh, some complex circuits going on. And so trying to build that up and make it all make sense is a pretty difficult task. So I hope I did alright and everyone understood what was going on. It wasn't too frustrating or anything. But actually we finished the entire thing and your full arcade game is ready to go and play. And so one other few things that we need to do is put in a water bucket right here. So one way to do that is to get a water bucket and then a normal bucket, to place a water bucket right there, and then to place an empty bucket in there. And I think that should be your entire arcade game ready to go. I want to place in a few yellow blocks just into this dropper to use as some fake tokens. And if you place them into here, our light should come on. If we press the button, it should spit those out. Oh, and wow, that's some pretty great luck. Alright, let's go actually fix that real quick. To get rid of that, you just need to go snag the item off the pressure plate. So let's play a bit more and make sure everything seems like it's working alright. There we go, minor prize. Got three tokens, that works great. Let's do a few more. Play this a bit more. Let's see, minor prize again, we already know that one's working pretty well. Ooh, that was close to a major prize. Another minor prize, that one sounded good. And nothing. I didn't hear any circuitry going, that's pretty good. Let's test a few more. There we go, a return, that's one I want to test. And there comes our item shooting down. So the one final thing we could test real quick is just a major prize, so I'll cheat a bit right there. And then there we go, that's all working just how it should. So I hope you guys really enjoy having this arcade game ready to go and play. And again, if you don't want to follow this really complex tutorial, the world to download will be in the description if you want to go and check this out. It's going to be this world right here, like I've said. I have tons of arcade games ready to go and play. And so yeah, I really hope you guys enjoy the arcade game I made. I've had a ton of fun building it and playing it. And coming up with the concept, this is something I built quite a while ago, and I've been improving it recently, and I'm really happy with the way it turned out. So yeah, I want to just thank you guys for watching the video. I hope you learned something, I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you guys next time, see you later.